Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Workplace English Communication Contacts and Strategies. This week, we will start reading the very last article of this course, and in the following week, we will finish it and have a look back at what we have covered in this course. Okay, let's take a look at what I have in store for you today. First, we need to figure out what cultural sensitivity and cultural faux pas are to prepare us for the reading today. The importance of cultural sensitivity in business dealing. From the words on the agenda, I believe you can tell that cultural sensitivity will be the key word in the remaining two weeks of our course. Before we start reading, I will also ask you to help me make predictions and skim the article before you listen to my explanation. We have done these reading skills, or I should say, we have practiced these reading skills many, many times. I do hope you are now a bit more familiar with how to read. More strategically. Finally, for today, we will take a cultural awareness test together to see how much you understand our lecture today. Okay, let's get started. First, cultural sensitivity is being aware that cultural differences and similarities between people exist without assigning them a value. Positive or negative, better or worse, right or wrong. What does it mean? It means when we see people from different cultural backgrounds, we need to know we might have something in common, and we also have our differences. But what is more important is we do not see differences or similarities as good or bad, right. Or wrong, we need to respect those differences and try to understand where they are from. Second, cultural sensitivity is being aware that cultural differences and similarities between people exist and have an effect on values, learning, and behavior. So we need to understand that the way we understand. Differences and similarities among different culture does affect the way we see other people, and also affect the way we interact with others. And more importantly, cultural sensitivity is a set of skills. That allows us to understand and learn about people whose cultural background is not the same as your own. So, cultural sensitivity is a skill that we all need to develop. Then, how do we develop it? You need to be aware of the first two points on the slides here. You always need to remember there are going to be. Differences and similarities between people of different cultures. You need to figure out what those differences are from, and do not see them as inferior or worse. You need to interact with them so that you can be more sensitive to the way they think, talk, or even behave. Okay, so I hope these three points here help you understand what cultural sensitivity is a bit better. Then here are four steps we can take to help us increase cultural sensitivity. The first one is valuing diversity. Before we value diversity, we need to know there are two major dimensions of diversity, which are primary dimensions, which refer to things we can't change, such as age, race, ethnicity, gender, physical quality, and sexual orientation. 
On the other hand, secondary dimensions refers to things that do change from person to person. That includes income, education, religious beliefs, military experience, geographic location, parental status, and marital status. Okay, so we need to first understand、uh, the two dimensions of diversity: primary dimensions and secondary dimensions. Then we also need to understand that a lot of countries are heterogeneous society. What is a heterogeneous society? A heterogeneous society means a a society where there are People from different cultures, people of different race. Okay, so America would be one good example of a heterogeneous society. You do see people of different race in an American society. So to describe the environment where people live in, people come up with different metaphors to describe. The environment they live in. The first one is called a melting pot. So, what is the melting pot? So, the melting pot metaphor emerged from the idea that customs and traditions of people of different races would blend and lose their own distinction after close contact over time, just like ingredients mix in a pot. So, when people of different ethnicities live together. Little by little, they might become more and more similar. Just like when we cook, we put different ingredients, and after we cook those ingredients for a while, they will become one dish. And then the second metaphor would be salad bowl. So the salad bowl metaphor was used to describe this blending of ethnic characteristic, like salad ingredients tossed in a bowl. Salad ingredients do not change even when they are mixed together. Although popular, this metaphor fails to acknowledge the tendency for cultural patterns to change through cultural encounters. Okay, so a salad bowl is a bit different from melting pot. A melting pot suggests that different cultures blend together in the end, but a salad bowl. Uh, refers to a situation where different cultures still stay distinct. So one criticism people have about this、uh, metaphor is that it fails to acknowledge that cultural patterns do change over time. And finally, kaleidoscope. So this seems to be more accurate in terms of reflecting what is happening in a diverse society. So when a kaleidoscope is in motion, new possibility emerge at every turn. Just like the interaction between cultural groups, this metaphor acknowledges that cultures keep changing through their interaction and yet maintain their basic characteristics. So the best metaphor here should be kaleidoscope, because because it does respect. The distinctiveness of each culture, but at the same time, you also acknowledge the possibility of different cultures blending in together. Okay, so these are the three common metaphors people use to describe a heterogeneous society. The second step we can take to increase cultural sensitivity is being able of honest self-assessment. We need to. Uh, evaluate the way we perceive people or cultures. Some questions we need to ask in, might include: Recall a time when you made a cultural assumption of someone. For example, when you see an African American person, do you assume this person can do something because of the way they look? Okay, so what assumption was made, and what effect did it have on the situation? And then the second one is about yourself. Recall a time when someone else made an assumption about you based on their perception of your culture. So we are Asian. 
when we go to other countries or when we study in other country, do people from other country assume we can do certain things? So think on these two questions. Third, being aware of the dynamics inherent when culture intersect. Intersect here means come together. So we need to understand that cultural commonality, meaning similarities between different cultures do exist, but they are oversimplified for most of the time. And people often assume that, oh, oh, this should be something universal, no matter which country we are from. Okay, if we have this kind of assumption, it might lead to serious consequences. So we do need to know for a fact that power and privilege can be present in these categories, such as race, gender, social economic, status, education, religion, and age. So if you are of a certain race, certain gender, certain social economic status, education, or you believe in certain religion, or you are a person of a particular age, people might perceive you differently, okay, whether good or bad. So these are the dynamics we need to be more aware of. And finally, after you are able to value diversity, able to assess yourself honestly, and able to be aware of the dynamics among different cultures, then you can develop approaches adapted to diversities. So these approaches should be uh, able to help you stay aware of assumptions and always push yourself to challenge your assumptions so that you can use the appropriate language to interact people from different cultures.